Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Newcastle United. Table topping Newcastle United. We are still up there. 17 wins out of 22 games. Two draws, three defeats, two of which came in the last episode. In between episodes, we have done some transfer business. It's a big signing brought all the way from the MLS. It's all we've done so far. We've also played some matches. So starting off, let's go talk about some transfers. The first of three players to leave the club, then we've already mentioned him previously. Romain Martin has now finally left signing for Gremio. £25 million and a little bit on top of that we got for him. Decent amount of money for a player who basically didn't really do much apart from go out on loan to some very good sides around Europe and not play too well when he was at us. We have also sold our Brazilian regen who came in through our youth intake last season. Roberto signing for Nottingham Forest. He wasn't ever going to get good enough for us. Apparently our scout reckons he's 19 out of 100. That's awful. And our South Korean striker Shin Dong Joon who was out on loan at Ulsan last season has returned from his loan deal and now gone out on loan to Anderlecht until the end of the season. So we'll never see him play for us. Are you ready for it? The one signing, the big name signing, 23-year-old English left-back formerly of Manchester United spent a season on loan at Hull, 75 games as well for New York City FC. It is Damien Potter. He's not very good. He's a left-back. I needed a backup English left-back. Basically, I need to buy English players and this was the only one I could really justify spending a reasonable amount of money on. I say reasonable, he cost £5.75 million. Not a huge amount of money, technically he's not great, but he's not going to play a lot of football anyway. He's a backup, even his contract says that. So yeah, of our £209 million transfer budget that we've had, we've spent just under £6 million of it, and we've brought in £25 million. So yeah, so far we're not really making use of having a billionaire owner. Also in between episodes, obviously we've played a few matches of football, starting off in the FA Cup third round against Cardiff, a 4-1 victory, Edson with two, Lopez Bays and Lucas Schmidt with a goal against our feeder club Oldham in the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg, it was a 2-1 victory, we scraped through this one, Christ Jolie and Cesar Giraidini with the goals, Brighton in the league, Robert Coleman and Matteo Lopez Bays scoring this time around, and then Edson and Marlon Charles scoring goals each against our former team Everton to give us another three points, which like I said, does put us top of the table or keep us top of the table, puts us top of the table. We weren't top in the last episode. It is still very, very tight at the top of the table, which means today's episode, which does have Arsenal as the first game, it is first versus second, and then the second game is Manchester City, who are currently down in fourth, who, if everything goes their way, could also be in second place. Well, one bit of good news, Chelsea beat Manchester United in the early kickoff, which means a victory for us, which isn't particularly likely. I'm not holding out much hope. I'm expecting two more defeats in this episode. But if we manage to get past Arsenal, a team that we did put six past earlier on in the season, if I'm not mistaken, we will go, what is that, six points? Is it six points clear? Four points clear. It'll be 56. We'll be four points clear of second place Arsenal. We will be five points clear of third place Manchester United. Oh, and by the way, Edson might have broken his ankle, so he's out for three to four months. Maybe I need to buy a right winger. I don't really need one permanently, but I'm not going to be here in the summer. The starting lineup then for the Arsenal game. It will be Adenam in goal, a back four of Delati, Zelaya, Andre and Restrepo. Chow Cesar, Bill Melbourne and Christ Choli as that midfield triangle. Matteo lopez Bayes will be playing as a right winger today. Marlon Charles on that left-hand side. Eduardo Romero as a striker. We are pretty strong, if I'm not mistaken. It is only Edson that is missing from our starting 11. And that would be our strongest starting 11 that we could possibly have. Although Giraidini should probably be a striker. Where's Giraidini? Oh, he's injured. That's right. Yep, he's another one of those players who's out injured. I need to probably think about registering Almada or Monasterio. Or maybe even Lucas Schmidt. Can I do these things? So if I just go there... No, I've got... Okay, I've got too many foreign players. That is fine. I say it's fine. It makes sense. It means I can't put any of these players in. That's annoying. So earlier on in the season, we did put six past Arsenal away from home. Away from home? At home. They were away from home. I don't think we're going to get the same kind of treatment at the Emirates. I assume they still play at the Emirates. I can't see why they would change their stadium after just 10 seasons. 15 minutes in, not a single highlight. Two shots for Arsenal, three shots for Arsenal. No actual highlights going on, though. We don't seem to be doing anything. Hold on. Saliba's throw to former Newcastle captain Lewis Cook. Crosses it in. No, he doesn't. Pays it back to Saliba. Now Roland Martinez. Cross in. Back post is Delati to get the ball clear. Lopez Bayes needs to get it clear further. Marlon Charles. Back to Andre, the Brazilian central defender. He's gone for an extremely strange pass. 
and it is intercepted. Now Tierney to Sosa. Sosa's going to go all the way back to Skernia now. He's going to go all the way back. No, he doesn't. Goes back to Sosa instead. Pellin forward on that right-hand side is Burns. Gets around a couple of players into the area. Goes for goal. Adanam makes a save. 25 minutes on the clock. The first proper highlight results in an Arsenal corner. Number 12 has gone over to take it, whoever that is. It is Shekri or Chekri towards the back post, a header clear from Zelaya. Lopez Bays flicks the head on. Now the Uruguayan Eduardo Romero finds Matteo Lopez Bays running down the right hand side, gets tackled. Delati tries to keep it in. The highlight ends and another one starts. Pellin with it inside the Newcastle half across Roland Martinez. Now Tierney. Tierney with the ball back to Pellin. We aren't doing a huge amount of football, are we, at the moment? Tierney with some space on the left. Is he going to cross it in? Charles Cesar tries to tackle him. Elliot Burns. Elliot Burns has made it 1-0 to Arsenal. We're doing awful. Well, that goal puts Arsenal on top of the table. I need to do something. Demand more. It's a throw. Delati lopez Bays. Delati would like it back. He's gone forward. Why has he done that for? Why did he think that was the thing to do? Christ Chole with it. Back to Andre. Andre forward. Marlon Charles, who's actually quite tired. Probably shouldn't be playing this game. Keeps going down the left-hand side. Does the England international into the area. He's been tripped. It is going to be a penalty. And of all players to concede it, it was Lewis Cook. So, I think it is Fernando Zelaya stepping up. The central defender. Yes, it is Zelaya. Goes for goal. Sends the keeper the opposite way. It is 1-1. We are back into this game. That was our first shot on target. Our first shot on target was a penalty. We're not doing so good. Got ourselves a free kick just outside the penalty area with a minute and a bit to go. Matteo Lopez Bays of all players steps up and what a finish that is from just outside the area. His fourth goal of the season. We are in front against Arsenal. Four more goals now. We want to win 6-1. We're not FMing Arsenal but we are certainly getting close to it. We actually only had two shots on target which resulted in both goals. We've had another one apparently just before the halftime whistle went. We are 2-1 to the good. What else is happening elsewhere? Is it Man City drawing 0-0 with Norwich? That's interesting. Going to do a change at halftime. Romero's going to come off. We're going to do the bad boy Bobby Mills and Lopez Bays can go as a striker. Matteo Lopez Bays, by the way, is like the most versatile player that I've got. Not because he is, more through force. And we've also got a load of players wearing referee kits all of a sudden. Not quite sure what's going on with that. Skernia back to Dragowski. 17 seconds into the second half. It is Pelin deep inside his own half. Lumps it upfield. Rush one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. His effort goes wide of the post. Lucky to still be in front. It's really nice looking at that league table being four points clear. It means when we play Man City, we could actually stay top even if we lose. Chekri with a free kick on the left for Arsenal. Choli gets it clear only as far as Skernia. Now Sosa in the area, he's crossed it, rushes there, Adenham easily holds on, we've got 25 minutes to play, is this actually going to carry on? Zelaya with the ball at his feet, plays it across, Andre wearing his all black kit for no apparent reason other than the game match engine has bugged. Lopez Bays, number 11, back to Cheole, cheole has got an option on the right apparently, it's Bobby Mills into the area, takes a touch, goes for goal, how has he missed that? Should be 3-1. Right, we're going to do a change, and I don't know whether it's a good idea to do it or not, but Marlon Charles needs to come off. Greg Huddle is going to come on, and we're going to put Chris Choley on the left. Do we swap? Yes, we definitely swap you two over. So Huddle is on for Marlon Charles. I want to do another sub. We've got Restrepo, who really could do with coming off, and then maybe bring on Valiente. Valiente, by the way, was out on loan at Cerro Portano, who has now returned, and he's already played once for us, getting a 7 rating, which actually wasn't too bad. We're going to keep that substitution option until late on in the game, but both of our fullbacks are doing pretty bad at the moment. Final 10 minutes, we are going to do a time-wasting sub about now, which is going to be Restrepo coming off for Valiente and then moving Andre over to the left-back position. That is all of our substitutions. And now we are going to go defensive because I don't want to throw this away. This is too big a three points to chuck away. Three minutes of injury time. The full-time whistle surely has to go now. It does go. How have we managed to do that? We've managed to beat second place Arsenal, going 1-0 up as well through Elliot Burns, then a penalty from Zelaya. Matteo lopez Bays with a wonderful free kick. Three very, very valuable points. We're now four points clear at the top of the table. And even better, Man City drew 0-0 with Norwich, which means... The drop down from 1st to 5th, or 4th, sorry, is 6 points. Down to 5th is ridiculous. We are 13 points clear of 5th place Liverpool. Right, we've got Man City in 3 days time, and this is a big worry for me. So, what I'm going to do 
pretty much everyone who could do with a bit of a rest is going to be getting two days off, which might not be a good thing, but we're going to have to do it. Time for match number two of the episode then. Manchester City down in fourth place. As we've already mentioned, we do need to keep an eye on Leicester versus Arsenal. Hopefully, Leicester can do us a favour. I don't think there was an early kickoff today. Doesn't look like it. Everyone currently sat on 23 games played. Probably isn't an early kickoff, Stuart, because it's a Tuesday night. It would be weird if they decided to do like a one o'clock kickoff just during the week. In between matches, I have been looking through the transfer market a little bit to try and see whether I can get hold of a right winger. I've had a look at Steve Finn, who I mentioned last episode, I think it was, of Chelsea. They want £170 million. Now, I can afford that, but I don't want to pay that much money for a player who is essentially going to be a rotation central midfielder. Seems a bit steep. The starting lineup then for the Manchester City game. I think my rest actually helped out quite a lot there. So it is going to be Adenam in goal who has just had an offer from Manchester United rejected because it was £37 million. He is one of the best goalkeepers on the game, if not the best. He's not going for anything less than £100 million. He is our number one goalkeeper. Johnny Santos, Zelaya, Andre and Restrepo will be the back four. Charles Cesar and Melbourne and Chris Chole will be the centre midfielders. Eric Horn will be our right winger today with Marlon Charles on the left. And Matteo lopez Bayes has moved up to be a striker. I've taken the somewhat executive decision to try and play Eric Horn as that right winger whilst Edson is injured. Because he's got some potential four star he's got some potential he's actually not bad he's already scored twice this season as well so i think it's time for eric horn to actually get a chance in the first team and if he's rubbish against man city we'll spend 100 million pounds on a right winger so man city are the other team to beat us so far this season literally only spurs and man city have beaten us spurs have done it twice man city have done it once I'd love to actually get a bit of revenge in this one. Esposito with the ball. Pelliziardi, good name, like it. Blonde now on the left. Runs past his man. Still has Eric Horn in front of him though. Crosses in. Header clear from Andre. Now Marlon Charles runs down the left-hand side. That two-day break has done him wonders, by the way. Down the left. He's got an option in the middle. He's just... He's gone and... He's got fouled again. He's gone and got fouled again. Almost exactly the same way that happened in the previous match. It is going to be Zelaya stepping up to take it. I think it's Zelaya. Should be Zelaya. It is. Is he going to get his second goal in as many games? Yes, he does. We are 1-0 up against Manchester City. Let's not throw this away this time like we did last time we played them. Six minutes now on the clock. I didn't realise how early that was in the match. Chavez forward. Peziardini forward to Mariba. Plays it across. Marlon Charles isn't going to get there. Sterling to Cortez. Lovely spin by Cortez there. Mainly just for the television viewer, wasn't it? Cortez across Sterling and Cortez. Passing between the pair of them. Restrepo doesn't get there. Peziardi back to Blom. The ginger Swede, I believe. Chavez all the way back to Mashuka in the centre circle. He's going to go all the way back to the keeper, isn't he? Chavez again. We're putting a lot of pressure on them here. Closed down is Matteo Lopez Bayes, I assume. Machuca forward. Mariba in the centre circle. He's going back. This is a strange highlight so far. Started with a throw on on the left hand side, didn't it, for Man City? Santos forward. Lopez Bayes doesn't win the header. Mariba lumps it over towards Esposito, and that's, that's into space. He's kicked that into space. Zelaya with a free kick for us. He's gone for a curling effort towards the front post, but just narrowly misses out. Ten minutes to play of the first half. It's pretty dull, which, to be honest, if it stays 1-0, I'm happy with a pretty dull game. Stays 1-0 at half time. We're not doing particularly good. We're not doing particularly good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say you've played well, but there's still room for improvement. This is where Man City undid us last time. I'm pretty sure we were winning at half time. And then conceded like four in the second half. I'm also going to give Matteo Lopez Bayes a team talk individually. I'm not happy with you. He looked fired up. This is good. Eric Horn, I need you. I'm not happy with you either. He looked fired up. Good. No changes at half time for us. Man City have done a change. There is an early ish highlight. Three or so minutes in. Lumps it upfield over the halfway line to Man City. Mariba in the centre circle across Bernardo Silva. Where's he going to go? Back to Casella, who I think was the substitution at half-time. Chavez on the left, in the middle to Bernardo. Now Sterling again. Bernardo Silva gets it. It's a little bit of a gap. He managed to somehow get through that. Chavez, the left-back. Is he a left-back? I think he's a left-winger, isn't he? Bernardo Silva, Chavez again, crosses in. Restrepo with a flicked head. Doesn't manage to get far enough away. Peziardi outside the area, crosses in. Raheem Sterling is there. And the diminutive winger, is he diminutive? I assume he is. Hits his header just wide. He's 5'7", he's about my height. He is also out of contract at the end of the season and really, really good. 
Do I do that as like a parting gift to the next manager and just sign him Raheem Sterling? Asensal to Sterling, edge of the area, goes for goal, takes a few deflections and how have we not cleaned that up? Esposito makes it 1-1, 60 minutes on the clock. Raheem Sterling gets the assist. Well, this is the start of the demise, isn't it? This is the start of the demise. Lopez Bayes is going to come off. We're going to do Jordan Ormerod. Yep, we're doing it. Jordan Ormerod is coming on. He's played a few games. He's not been amazing. Eric Horn's also on a 6.5, so he might be getting replaced for a £100 million right winger. Give him a demand more. Ten shots we've had. They've had seven. We could do with actually having a highlight in this half. Or not. Three minutes of injury time to play. It's looking like it's a 1-1 draw. I'll take it. It's better than nothing. At home, we really could have done with beating them. But a 1-1 draw will do. I think Arsenal won their game, so they have closed their gap once again. But we're still top of the table. The good news for Eric Horn as well. We finished the match on a 6.8, so he's not being replaced just yet. He's only got, what, half a month to play well as that right winger until we might actually just have no choice but to play him until the end of the season. As you can see, we are still top of the table. 57 points. Second place is Arsenal on 55 points. And then Manchester United and Man City, both on 51 in third and fourth. Although Man United still have to play their game. So we're going to go forward and see how well they get on because they could put themselves back in the mix. They'll only be on 54. Doesn't matter. We don't care about that. There you go. Look, even Eric Horn is, uh, is getting himself a pay rise. £25,000 a week he's now on. That is going to do it then for this episode. Next episode, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? We are obviously still in the transfer window. There's not a lot happening in February. We might do West Ham Watford. Possibly. And then we've got the uh, Europa Cup 2 mess. And then Chelsea Liverpool. So we're going to do West Ham Watford because it gives us a chance to summarise transfers that take place. There's probably going to be a Carabao Cup final someone as well. Which might actually be the next episode. If we beat Oldham... We'll have Watford and I think the Carabao Cup final or West Ham and the Carabao Cup final will be in that gap. So yeah, it's going to be West Ham Watford or West Ham Carabao Cup final or Watford Carabao Cup. It's just join me next episode. Thank you very much for watching this one. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back next time with more Football Manager.